Good morning and praise the Lord. We welcome you to our morning devotion this morning. Today is also the day that we are celebrating the All Saints Day. And so we are happy to join with you in our service this morning. My name is Reverend Joseph Kamau. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I consider it a privilege to have an opportunity to share the word of God with you today. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we are grateful to you for the gift of life. We invite your presence to speak to us through your word. May we be encouraged, comforted, and charged by your word through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our topic this morning is understanding religion. Understanding religion. And the scripture reading is James chapter 1. We read verse 26 to 27. James 1, reading from 26. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Religion is as old as humankind. The art of man worshipping the deity. After the birth of Seth, Genesis 4 tells us men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Men began to worship the Lord. Religion, in simple definition, offers moral or compass on how to deal with the situations and how to treat each other. Religion offers guidance. Different people groups relate with the deity in different ways. But the ultimate is that there is a connection between the human beings and the supreme being. We will be looking at the two. However, in the world today, we have two dominant religions. That is, the true religion and the false religion. The passage we have read, James 1, 26 to 27, alludes to the true religion. What is it that God expects from our relationship with him? When we say, for instance, we belong to God, we identify with God. He is our God. We are his people. Then what does he expect from us? And James has contributed immensely in his epistle in helping us to know the requirements of God upon his people. But there is also false religion. In 1 Kings chapter 18, 
verse 26 through 30, we find in Israel a dominant form of worship, a religion that has loyalty not to God, Jehovah, but rather to an idol, Christine Baal. The people worshipped this idol, led by over 400 prophets. The king and the queen, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, also paid spiritual loyalty to this idol, and therefore the nation, by choice, or through conclusion, also paid homage to Baal, but Baal could not help them. Baal could not help them in any way. They were paying allegiance to a false god and a false religion. So there are two types of religion the true religion, and the false religion. No religion whatsoever advocates for immorality. Every religion has its own moral code that guides the day-to-day -day lives of the people. Actually, Idols have good morals attributed to them in as far as sacrifices and commitment is concerned. The problem with idols, they fight with God, and that fighting with God makes everything that is idol-related to be useless. So whether that religion will advocate for peace, will advocate for charity, will advocate for unity, as long as that religion has no homage to God Almighty, that religion is useless. That religion will not take man to eternity, it can only help in as far as the world is concerned. What is the role of religion in the society? And the role of religion in the society is to provide strength in as far as handling misfortunes is Concerned. Now, let's be clear on this. Not all religions can help to solve misfortunes. Actually, religions outside God Almighty, instead of solving problems, they add to the problems because they leave a vacuum. Think of King Saul when he visited the witch at Edo in 1 Samuel 29. Yes, the ghost of Samuel reappeared. But did that solve the problem of King Saul? Not at all. If anything, Saul received his death penalty sentence. When the ghost of Samuel said to him, because you have disturbed me, you and your son will be with me tomorrow. False religion appears to solve problems, but in reality, it does not solve. For God does not share his glory with anyone. 
forget about the good moral code, but deal with the question of who is the source of all this. Rituals, sacrifices, and offerings offered to the deity are temporal and very limited in power. Actually, on the contrary, the true religion that is believing in God and trusting in him does not require all these things God requires broken, contrite spirits. Psalm 51 and verse 17. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, as we pay allegiance to the religion, let's understand which religion we subscribe to. I share these few words in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.